today's topic again, the number one reason why freight brokers fail and how to prevent it. There's a lot of information to go over, okay? So for those of you that are joining me here live, give me some thumbs up. If you're watching this on replay, give me some thumbs up, give me some likes. And throughout the training, if you see value, uh, and if you've seen value in any of my past trainings, do me a favor, share the stream. Again, this is all free training. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I give away more free training, free, absolutely free, free through my blog, through YouTube, through these Facebook Lives, then most freight broker training courses give away and they can charge you five hundred, a thousand, even five thousand dollars or more if you've done some research on that. And again, Freight Broker Bootcamp, my online course, is the most cost effective and comprehensive online freight broker training. So for those of you that are curious, feel free to check that out. And so I got a lot of information to dive into. I had to keep some notes because there's a lot of statistics I want to share with you. And so the number thing I, wonder, thing I want to share with you is this. In order to become a successful freight broker, welcome Melanie, welcome Jose, you are going to have to learn how to sell, okay? You're just going to have to get over the fact that as a business owner, customers are not going to come to you. It's not like a coffee shop where you set up a location on the corner of Maine and, and you know Young Street and all of a sudden traffic comes through and people go buy coffee. It doesn't work that way in the freight brokerage business. The way it works is this, it's really simple. You set up your freight brokerage or your freight agency and then you contact shippers, manufacturers, producers, distributors, people that make and produce goods that need to be shipped and you provide them value by helping them manage that freight from point A to point Z. You help it get picked up and delivered on time in good condition with no problems. That's what you do and you make money to do it and you can make a lot of money doing it. I did it, others have done it, you can do it, okay? So you are gonna have to learn how to sell. Now you don't have to be a professional salesperson but you do need to learn the fundamentals and basics of selling. And so the num, you know, I don't know if you realize it but um, the reason why most salespeople fail is it's not skill and it's not the lack of training. It really is the fact that they fail to tell their story to enough people. They fail to contact enough potential prospects for them to even become successful. Now, isn't that weird? Why would somebody spend potentially thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars starting a business, you know, starting some business. In the freight brokerage business, it's much lower cost, but why would somebody spend thousands of dollars and not go out and make the sales calls? Why wouldn't they go out and talk to more people? Well, it's pretty simple. The number one reason is fear, okay? It's the fear of failure. They're too afraid to fail. They'd rather fail and lose money, okay, if they can avoid fear. So those fears are fears that come up from the time we're young and the fear of failure is something that can be part of your family structure and how you've been raised. It can be part of you know, the you know, corporate America where you've had experience. It can be entrepreneurial experience, past experience. You know, what happens is this, you know, most people fail because they have a fear of failure. And so, you know, my philosophy on fear is really, really simple, all right? And this is something I teach my children. This is something I've worked with hundreds of people that I've worked with over the years. And my fear, my philosophy on the fear of failure is really simple. If you're afraid of something, if you're afraid of cold calling, if you're afraid of meeting people face to face, if you're afraid of selling, if you're afraid of public speaking, if you're afraid of doing videos, whatever you're afraid of, okay, the more you do it, the easier it gets, but there is no way around it, okay? You can't circumvent sales if you're gonna build a successful freight brokerage. Just not gonna happen. If you think that you're gonna start a freight brokerage and you're gonna go hire a bunch of salespeople, you're gonna start up with limited capital and you're gonna go out and hire a bunch of salespeople and they're gonna build the business for you, that's a very small percentage opportunity. You are gonna to need to be the sales leader to start at least and then from there you can evolve and hire people. So I want you to understand it's really important that 
whenever you fear, if it's sales you fear or whatever it is, you have to steer directly into that fear. You know, I know a lot of people, even myself, I used to be afraid of public speaking. There was a day when there was no chance that you would catch me on live video doing this to, thousands of people are going to see this video over the next week to two weeks. Thousands. There's no chance that you would have caught me doing this live. I had a fear of it. How did I overcome it? I did more public speaking. I did more Facebook live videos and, you know, and I've built a comfort level. Now, does that mean there's not a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of fear? Sure there is. Of course there is. Something can always go wrong. I can always screw up. Hey, I make mistakes and you're going to make mistakes. But what I want you to understand is the best way to overcome fear is to steer directly into it. Okay. So you've got to face your fear. I tell the story. My daughter is afraid of frogs. Okay, my daughter, my 11-year-old daughter, Maggie, is afraid of frogs. I don't know if you have any fears, but she's been afraid of frogs for ever since she was little. And so what I'm trying to do now to get her over that fear of frogs is really simple. I'm just trying to introduce pictures of frogs so she can, if I can get her to sit and look at a frog in a picture, that's the first step. And then at that point, once she's comfortable with that, then we'll watch videos of frogs Thing, when they're moving and interacting. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll have a live frog, but it'll be a long ways away. And then we'll move it closer and closer. But the point is, is that I, she is never going to get over the fear of frogs until she faces it. It's just that simple. And you will never get over the fear of sales or any of your fears or any fear of failure unless you steer into it. That's my biggest piece of advice, okay? So as we move on here, I want to tell you about a study that was done that I, that I researched uh, quite a while ago, and it's called, um, it's called the Pike Syndrome. I don't know if you've ever heard that or not, but you could, look, you could look it up on YouTube, you could look it up on Google. It's not a study that I did, but it's called the Pike Syndrome. And what it did is this, they did a study and they took a northern pike. Now a northern pike is a fish, it's like a predator, right? They eat minnows and eat other fish, okay? So what happens is, they took, did this study, they put this pike into a fish tank, all right? And then what they did is they put a whole bunch of natural prey for that pike into the fish tank, which is typically minnows and other fish, smaller minnows and other fish. And I don't have a visual here for you, but try to imagine what I'm talking about. Imagine a big fish in a tank with a bunch of little fish that he would normally eat, okay? <laughs> so... They did this study and what they did that was interesting is they put a piece of glass between the big pike and the small minnows so that the pike couldn't get to it, but he could see through it and he didn't know there was a piece of glass there. Okay, so just imagine. So you can imagine what happened. The pike who sees these minnows all of a sudden reacts and boom, bangs his head right into the glass. And every time he goes after a minnow, boom, he bangs his head into the glass. And he continues to bang his head into the glass. Boom, 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 one after another, one after another. And after a little while, guess what happened? I'll bet you can't imagine what happened. The pike, he stopped going after the minnows. Now, I'm not, you're probably not surprised because it's not just human nature. That's just nature in itself teaching you what to do and what not to do. It's a survival skill. And so what's happened is, you know, the activity that he was doing, which was negatively rewarded, right, by banging his head in the glass and hitting his nose and, and feeling pain, after doing that for a while, what happened? He eventually stopped. So I'm going to make sure, one thing I forgot to do, guys, I'm sorry, I wanted to make sure the stream was live, but more importantly, I wanted to make sure that I pinned it to the top of the stream here so that you guys could access it without having any problems. So, so in any event, that's how the study worked. So after a little while, the pike settled to the bottom of the bottom of the cage and didn't move. He didn't go after any more minnows. Okay. And then what the scientists did is they took the glass out and they took the separation out between the minnows and the pike. So now they were in all one tank together and there was no barriers between him and the minnows. And guess what he did? I'll bet you'll be surprised. He did not go after the minnows. 
the minnows were literally almost swimming in his mouth and he would not go after them. He sat there and sat there and sat there and would not go after the minnows. And eventually, I mean, because he lost his will to live and to survive, his survival instincts, the pike died. Isn't that crazy? Now, what's the moral of that story, right? You're probably wondering, why in the heck is this guy telling me a story about a pike and a bunch of minnows? Well, if you think about it, we've all known pike. And some of you are probably pike. Now, you haven't died yet, but maybe you quit. Maybe you haven't given your all. Maybe you haven't done everything you could. Maybe you've, you've seen some failure and you've settled to the bottom of the fish tank. And so, you know, the lesson is this. You know, the past does not equal the future. Just because you may have failed at selling or at freight brokerage or at anything you've ever tried before, being an entrepreneur, starting a business, in the past doesn't mean that you won't succeed going forward, okay? Very important, the past does not equal the future, okay? The past got, you know, the pike, he got stuck on the past and he let his limiting beliefs be his demise and, and eventually he died, okay? Now I'm not saying you're gonna die, but my point is, is that your business could die, right? Your passion could die, right? Your drive could die if you think about the past of what's happened in the past, all right? So he gave up and eventually he lost his will to survive. And so what I want you to take from that is that the past does not equal the future. Can anybody relate to that? If you can relate to that, give me some thumbs up, share the stream. I'd love to um, you know, get some feedback from you guys if this makes sense to you. Because again, I've taught this to literally hundreds and hundreds of salespeople over the years and some people just don't get it. It doesn't make sense to them. Others, you know, they get it because they understand that they have a fear. They fear failure. They fear some, some sort of fear is holding them back and that they recognize and that they're vulnerable enough to recognize the fact that that is part of what's holding them back and that's part of what will cause them to eventually fail if they don't address it, if they don't make some minor changes. And so I'm going to talk to you about some things that you can do going forward, but more importantly, I want you to recognize it. This is what I really want you to recognize, okay? All right, so the fear of sales is usually the fear of getting the word no. You don't want to get rejection, okay? So you don't want to get rejected from your prospect. Nobody likes rejection. It hurts, right? Just like the pike. Every time he hit his nose, that was rejection. It was pain, it was pain, it was pain. And eventually he just stopped trying to, you know, to get the minnows. And that's what salespeople do. So let me share some statistics with you that I think you're gonna be really surprised at. Um, I don't know if you realize it or not, but 44% of salespeople quit after the first no. Isn't that crazy? 40, statistically speaking, 44% of salespeople quit after they get the first no. They quit pursuing a prospect after getting the first no. 22%, another 22%, the 44% after the first, another 22% quit after the second no. Another 14% quit after the third no. And another 12% quit after the fourth no. Now, if you add those up, I'm not very good at math, but if you add those up, that's 92% quit before they get the fifth no, okay? Those are statistics. Those aren't my statistics. Those are statistics that have been compiled over many, many years, and these are numbers that hold true over time, is that salespeople 92% of salespeople quit before they get the fifth no from a prospect. How many times have you quit before you got the fifth no? Well, I'm gonna tell you why that's a mistake. Here's why. Did you know, on the other hand, that only 2% of sales are ever made in the first phone call? Yeah, 2%. 3%. An additional 3% are made on the second call. 
Wow, pretty small numbers, right? Two phone calls and we've only made about 5% of our sales. Another 5% are made on the third phone call. Another 10% are made on the fourth phone call. But here's the cool part. 80% of all sales take place between the fifth and the 12th phone call or the fifth and the 12th contact, right? 80% happen between the 5th and the 12th contact. Now, I'm not a rocket scientist, guys. I'm not, usually I'm not the smartest guy in the room, and that's okay. I'm all right with that. But let me give you a nugget. It's pretty simple. The secret to winning in sales is this. If 80% of sales are made between the 5th and the 12th contact, And we know that 92% of salespeople quit before the fifth no. Well, if we want to outperform our competition and we want to succeed at sales as a freight broker, as a freight agent, as any part of a salesperson, the fortune is in the follow-up. So all we need to do is follow up, follow up, follow up, and continue to follow up with those prospects. Just because you get one no doesn't mean it means no today, not no forever. Now, I don't mean you're going to call the same prospect every day and get a no after no after no every day, but you do have to follow up. You call somebody once and they say, no, I'm not interested. Doesn't mean that you cross them off the list and you never call them again, right? You do want to follow up with them a few weeks later, a few months later. You want to have a follow-up series. So, The secret to success in sales as a freight broker or freight agent, salesperson in general, is follow up, follow up, follow up. And do not fear the no. You cannot be afraid of getting no. You cannot be afraid of getting rejection. You have to get comfortable with getting no's, all right? And so, you know, I'm going to share with you a a few stories here of people that had massive failure. Massive failure. And you're probably going to recognize some of these people. They're great stories. And so everybody has probably heard of the most prolific basketball player of all times, Michael Jordan. Well, I don't know if you realize or not, but Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. The best basketball player of all times was cut from his high school basketball team. He missed over 9,000 shots in his career. He lost over 300 games and he was he missed 26 shots, 26 game winning shots where they entrusted the ball to him. He shot it and missed and they lost the game. Now, how many times did he fail? Thousands of times. He missed shots. He lost games and he became one of the most prolific basketball t- players of all time. In my opinion, the best basketball player of all time. I don't even like basketball, I'll be honest with you. But I used to watch basketball just because of Michael Jordan. That simple, okay? Another one you may have heard of, Abraham Lincoln. Failed at business, was a business failure. Had a nervous breakdown and lost multiple elections. Went on to be voted, nominated the president of the United States and literally changed the history, the face of American history with some of the things he was able to do while in office. Can you imagine if he had quit after he had a little bit of failure, after he heard his first no, after he got his first bit of rejection? Another one, Colonel Sanders, this is one of my favorite, you know, was rejected over a thousand times before finally selling his famous 11 herbs and spice recipe. The guy was over 60, 65 years old when he realized his restaurant was failing and he decided to go out and sell his recipe to other people and I think he got rejected for two years. It took him two years to get his first customer and then before he, you know, before he passed away, he was a multimillionaire because of Kentucky Fried Chicken that we all know, KFC. Another one, um, Babe Ruth, here's a great one. This is, a, this is a perfect one. Babe Ruth was awarded in 1923, won 
the single season record for home runs. In 1923, he hit more home runs than anybody in all of Major League Baseball. And that's why you know Babe Ruth. But what you may not know is at the exact same time, at the exact same time, he was, he was given another award. And the other award was the fact that he struck out more than anybody else in the entire league. But he didn't care because he realized that every time he was at bat, his philosophy was swing away. He wasn't worried about how many times he struck out. He wasn't worried about any of that. What all he did was he got up there, he put his best foot forward, and he swung away. And he wasn't worried about failing. And because he wasn't worried about failing, he hit more home runs in 1923 than anybody in, in, in the game. And he is now a legend in baseball. There's not one person that I've ever met that's played baseball that doesn't know who Babe Ruth is. And he transcends baseball. He's an international hero when it comes to sports. If you go to Japan, people know who Babe Ruth is, okay? So uh, that's, an, I mean, I could go on. The stories could go on and on and on and on, okay? But the fact is, is that I have never met anybody who's ever had any success in life and business or otherwise who has not had to endure significant failure and hardship. It just doesn't happen. You don't go from here to success overnight. It's not a direct line. What you have to understand is if this is you starting out today and this is success, between you and success, there's gonna be a lot of failure. And you have to go through that failure to get on the other side where success lies. And so you have to be willing to make some mistakes. You have to be willing to take some rejection. You have to be willing to acknowledge the fact that your past failures do not equate your future destiny. And so, you know, I want you to understand that is the secret. The secret is not some script that I can give you on how to become this super freight agent or rock star freight broker because that script doesn't exist. The script is in your mind. You have to be mentally prepared and you have to mentally understand that you, in order to get from here to success, you're gonna go through failure. You are going to endure failure. You are going to get rejections. You are going to get no's. You are going to fall down. You are going to get frustrated. But if you continue to endure and you get to the other side, to the victor goes the spoils. I remember when I first started my freight brokerage back in 2003, it took me hundreds, hundreds of phone calls to get my first customer. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if I had quit on the 50th or 100th phone call? I would have never went on to build that company to over 80 million in sales and eventually sell it for millions of dollars, right? So the fact is, is that there's no script that I can give you. There's no um, magic words I can transcend on you other than the fact that you have to understand that you cannot, you have to get over the fear of failure. So I'm gonna give you a nugget right now, okay? There's a book and you can find it online. I want you to go, go, go to Google and search for a book. It's not my book, it's a well-known book for salespeople. It's called Go For No, okay? It's called Go For No, and the author, let me see, who is the author again? I can't remember the name. Oh, the authors are Richard Fenton and Andrea Waltz. That's right. So it's, a, it's called Go For No. Search for it. It's a book. You can buy it on Amazon. It's cheap. You can probably buy a digital or a physical copy, and it's a great book. It talks about some of this stuff, but it also talks about the philosophy of going for no and not being afraid of hearing no. It's a great book, okay, and I would highly recommend it. I can't dig in a little deeper today. I know we've spent quite a bit of time here, and I do want to do some live Q&A. So if you guys have enjoyed the training, give me some thumbs up, and um, also share the stream. I'd greatly appreciate it if you would share the stream. And for those of you that you know are commenting, liking, and sharing the stream, feel free to shoot some questions into the chat box. That would be great, and I will gladly try to answer those questions for you either live here or afterwards, depending upon when, the, when I can find the questions here. So 
I'm refreshing my browser right now. Feel free to fire away with some questions and we'll do a little bit of Q&A. Let me just pull up the live stream here and see if I've got any Q&A in here. So we got a lot of people that have commented. That's awesome. Thank you, uh, Jean-Marc Princeton and Melanie Baines. Um, thank you, Charles Morrison. Awesome. So are there any questions? If you guys have some questions about anything here or even other topics related to freight brokerage or being a successful freight agent, feel free to, f to put those in there. And um, for those of you that are curious, while we're waiting, for those of you that are curious about becoming a freight, what it means to become a freight broker or freight agent or how to become a freight broker or freight agent, check out FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. Again, it's a shameless plug. The fact is it, I have the most cost-effective and comprehensive online freight broker training program without a doubt, okay? It's $98, one-time fee, no recurring fees. You get full access to the training for six months and we have a 60-day, 100% money-back guarantee, Okay, how can you go wrong, right? Been in business 10 years, have trained thousands and thousands of freight brokers, all right? Thank you, Michael, thank you very much. Marley, uh, let's see, what else have we got here? So I got a bunch of people that said they're gonna get the books. Um, great, thank you, Michael, thanks for the presentation, guys. Most people do struggle with this. Most entrepreneurs, not just freight brokers, most pe entrepreneurs do struggle with this. They are so afraid of failure, they'll, they'll avoid making sales calls and the alternative, they'll find some busy work. Like for example, it's, it's, it's very stereotypical, right? You have a brand new entrepreneur. He's more worried about creating a website. He's more worried about creating business cards. He's more worried about creating letterhead. He's more worried about creating signs. He's more worried about doing social media marketing than he is doing sales calls. And the reason why he's more worried about and he doesn't do the sales calls is because he's finding all these other things to do that do not have rejection. You don't get rejection from business cards and websites and all these things. Those are all great things to do. Don't, don't get me wrong. But the only thing that's going to get customers and is going to pay the bills is if you pick up the phone. You got to pick up the phone. You got to be willing to hear no. And so once you guys get past that fear of failure, the fear of hearing no, the skies will open. I promise you that if you endure that pain in the early stages of your business, in the early stages of your career, once you break through, it'll be like a skyrocket. You, will, you, will, you can absolutely explode your business. You can do things that you've never, ever thought were possible, okay? So let's see. Um, what are some of the, are there any questions in here? I'm not seeing any. Let's see. Sorry, I have to jump on here. After the training, how and where do I go for the license? Um, how and where do you go for the license? Um, it'll go, oh, my online training will teach you and show you the steps everywhere you need to go to get licensed. Okay, so to get your freight broker authority, your bond, all that. Um, Marley says, work hard to succeed in the world. Absolutely, it takes hard work. Nothing's gonna be given to you. You know, nobody's just gonna walk up and say, hey, you know, I want you to, Move my freight. You're going to have to reach out. You're going to have to take the initiative. You're going to have to look fear in the eye and you're going to have to face that fear. It's really that simple. So listen, I want to thank you guys for joining me. I hope you guys have a fantastic Memorial Day. Make sure you, uh, you know, thank a veteran if you see any or know any. And um, if you guys have questions, great. Put them in the chat box later. I'll respond to them. Um, if you would share the stream, that would be great. Greatly appreciated. If you're interested in looking at my online course, go to FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. And I look forward to seeing you guys next Monday at noon, every Monday at noon Eastern time for more free freight broker training. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.